What up my fellow dorks? It is the Turtle Dork here for another recap and review. This is the Reigns of Castamere. Yes, we have arrived. It is the Red Wedding. It is episode nine of Game of Thrones for our recap and review. This is the Disco Dork, I'm the Turtle Dork. Let's, no further, uh, no further ado, let's get into this. Before we get to there though, uh, let's, let's, there was other stuff that actually happened in this episode. Was it? I think it was. Hmm. I think it was. A lot of people may have forgot. It's more than just a red wedding. There's a lot. There's actually some pretty good stuff that happened in this episode. So let's start off with uh, Rob and Caitlin. We start with Rob and Caitlin. Uh, the episode opens with them uh, talking about taking uh, Casterly Rock. So they got the board out and they got all, all the pawns on the board and basically Rob is saying, look, um, I didn't seek your counsel before uh, when you told me about Theon. So now I'm, I'm seeking your advice, I'm seeking your counsel now. Uh, is this a good idea? Um, and so she, she's strategizing, she's saying, look, if we take Castle Rock, if the Lannisters send uh, their army before we're able to get out, we'll be trapped between them and, and the sea. Uh, so she's like, look, make them, uh, make them pay, uh, I forget the exact wording, what she says, but she's like, you know, uh, uh, make them know what it feels like, uh, to lose someone that you love. It's something in that regard. But, um, I don't know. It was just an interesting scene knowing how this scene ultimately ends just to see, to start this scene with the two of them, um, still trying to strategize with this war as far as trying to take Castle Rock, um, and, and do something that, do something to the Lannisters that the Lannisters have done to them, which uh, has taken away Winterfell, has really kind of uh, brought Rob down as far as like how other people see them. So they're trying to weaken the Lannisters. So if they feel like they can take over Castle Rock, then that will weaken the Lannisters in this war as well. Uh, what do you think about that? It's, you know, Rob is trying to make amends for you know his disregard of his mother's advice and patch things up but yeah. i mean it's good that he got to do it now before you know the red wedding what ultimately happens then but i mean it's something he should have done like all like this shit would have been avoided you know entirely if he had done this yeah. way sooner but you know 2020 hindsight whatever they say about that shit um you know it you know on a rewatch yeah. this scene plays different like a lot just of like, other yeah, pivotal just, ones uh, yeah exactly you know you watch this the first time it's like oh that's cool yeah there you know yeah that's what he's I'm saying. Listening, listen to his mom now okay he's got a good plan he got a mm -hmm. good strategy okay rob's about to get busy yeah let's do it yeah going back on a rewatch and watching this it's just it's not a it's not an um it's not an uplifting type scene it's not nah. like you're like oh you you're not you're not thinking okay you know rob's getting back on his getting his footing back he's about to get get busy you don't feel like that it's just it's sad actually it's a sad scene yeah um so continuing with that then we have uh the starks and the phrase and their meeting when they go to uh phrase house oh yeah and uh so he's introducing all of his different daughters his granddaughters and it, it's, it's it's a bit it's a bit of humor here because edmir we know how uh lord edmir uh has been uh resilient a little a little a little reticent to uh be a part of this wedding and his face when uh, Walter Frey is going through his daughters and granddaughters because he knows that it's Rosalind that he's married. First of all, if you've got so many kids, you can't remember all of their names. Stop fucking and having kids. That's what I'm saying. Really? It's, uh, and Edmure's just making that face that, um, they kind of like, that face you make, like when you're trying to like prepare for like a punch in the face, you're like, uh, <laughs> is that, is that her? Is that <laughs> This shit is just hilarious. And then, like, Walter Frey not remembering his kids' names. Um, but then, like, the way the scene kind of ends when he asks uh, Talisa to walk up, and he's basically just looking at her up and down and, and commenting about her physique, how she looks, and uh, it's really disrespectful, um, which, I mean, is suited for that character. 
but very disrespectful to her and uh, to Rob. Um, and it's, I don't know, it was a little uncomfortable. I totally forgot about that part, like mm -hmm. with him uh, looking at Talisa in that way. Um, but yeah, that was uh, an interesting uh, scene. Um, then we have Danny. Uh, planning to invade uh, Yunkai. So mm -hmm. this is uh, going to your point, Jor, man. Like, so, you know, Dario is, you know, they're looking at a map and he, like, pulls the slick move where he's trying to show her. So he grabs her hand. He's like, oh, it's right over here. Look, you don't got to come up <laughs> behind her and grab her hand like this and put it on the map. You're not, you're not trying to teach her how to tee off on golf where you got to go behind. Just point to where the... Man, and then they the whole the, time George is sitting there like the George's face, and he's like, mm. he's like, okay, <laughs> all right. Ah, I feel for that guy, man. Mm. God damn, I feel for that dude. Mm. Um, yeah, man. Uh, Arya, oh Arya, begging uh, the Hound not to kill that that guy on the side of the uh, the road. Mm. Um, that he's trying to uh, mend the wheel to his carriage. Uh, because they need some, uh, uh, they need to travel. Uh, they, they need something to travel on, mm. and they find this guy who's got this thing broken down. So the hound knocks him out, and uh, Arya uh, was like, "No, don't kill him! Don't kill him!" And uh, so again, a little banter back and forth, but it's also kind of establishing a little bit. I know you mentioned something about you hope that doesn't come back where. Um, the Hound mentions to Arya is like, look, basically your kindness is going to get you killed. Well, you know, I mean, just take a look at these rewatches, how we've been pointing out little innocuous comments that when we yeah. see it initially, we go, yeah. we just dismiss it. But then a few seasons later, those, those, you know, throwaway phrases have significant meaning. Exactly. And I hate for that particular phrase to ring true. Um, I don't know. It's we'll gonna see. it's gonna be interesting, man. Uh, the wildlings when they attack the old man uh, for the horses. Um, so this like they're at like this farm area, and this old man they come upon uh, this old man who has I think maybe like twenty horses or something like that, and uh, so they're about to raid uh, this man to get his horses, and John pulls uh, what you uh, call your bowling move. Um, <laughs> so uh, the old man uh, it gets on one of his horses to escape and Igrid has a shot with her bow and arrow to basically kill him mm. and, and as he's about to pull uh, you know Jon Snow comes up behind her it's like Igrid <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, and so she misses. I don't know if she misses on purpose or if he actually startled her. I think she missed on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, but I just thought that was funny. But I definitely want to uh, set that up because that's that's going to set up something pivotal at the windmill uh, when we get to Bran. Mm -hmm. uh, so is that my next thing, Arya? Um, oh, uh, when she sees when. So they're, 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 they're right there by the bridge where the phrase yeah, are. Yeah, so they're probably like a couple miles away, but they so can she's see not far. The, they can see the 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 phrase castle in the distance, and yeah. uh, her and the hound are there, and um, there's a, you know, she calls him out because you know, yeah. the hound is like, well, you keep looking every five minutes, like they're not going anywhere. You're scared, aren't you? You you're worried that you know, yeah, that's you, 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 you're worried that. You know, you're going to get there and they're going to be gone or you're not going to get there in time, but just chill out. It'll be OK. Yeah. And um, but that it ultimately ends up being the case. You know, like they get there and they they're it's not there in yeah. time they're, they're yeah. too late. Yeah. Um, but in this scene here, there's another comment that's made that I have to wonder, is it going to come back? Because. You know, he, she, he's saying, I know you're afraid that you're, they're going to leave, that, you know, you're not going to get there in time. Oh. And she said, yeah, I know fear when I see it in your, in your face. And she's like, I know yeah. fear, too. I've seen it in you when um, when, uh, when uh, Beric's uh, sword Beric. was on fire. Yeah. You're afraid of fire, aren't yeah. you? I heard about the stories about your brother. And uh, and he says, uh, so that giving you any ideas? And she's like, might. And um, and she she tells him, she turns around, she's like, one day I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a sword through your eye and, a, and out the back of your skull. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see, man. I, 
I know I'll, you don't want that, but you didn't want Rob to die and Talisa well, to die that, either. Well, that's right? true. That's true too. You and don't like give I said, a fuck about what you want. <laughs> you you, you damn right. You, you, that, that's true. That's true. But I mean, the relationship between the Hound and Arya is kind of similar to the relationship between Brienne and Jaime. Now. Uh, Arya and the Hound have been apart for a while. No, well, when Jamie and Brienne part ways, they they part they part ways on good terms. Well, I believe that they parted ways on on and it wasn't on bad terms. Like the just, Hound, yeah. Um, the last time she saw the Hound, he had just gotten to the fight with Brienne. She knocked his ass down that hill, fucked him up pretty bad. She went down and she was going to kill him. But she decided, you know what, I'm gonna, for whatever reason, I can't remember, but she walked away. But I don't think they was on good terms because she wouldn't have left him there to die. Okay, I, I gotta go. But that, I, and that's the last time she sees him, because at that point, she's going to Bravos. But there, but there is something there, like, this, this something between Arya and the Hound. I mean, I know she still has those feelings that she wants to kill him. And then she goes to Bravos and, and trains and gets the skills necessary to do that shit. And then she's, cause she, she gets her revenge on the phrase. Um, someone else, I can't remember, but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering, and I'm like you, I'm, I don't want that to be the case. That's yeah. why I'm, that's why when she said that, that's why I was like, Oh man, I hope that doesn't come back. I hope that's not one of those phrases that comes back. You know what I'm saying? Like I hope, because we, we talked about it we talked about it before where I was like you know Arya could potentially wondering if the, the the cycle of revenge theme that has just caught up to Rob yeah. and has just caught up to Caitlyn I'm wondering if this cycle of revenge theme is going to catch up to Arya and, I, and I, I remarked that it's possible that at some point maybe she's going to have to make a choice and she she maybe chooses to step off that path of revenge and, and not complete that cycle or not feed into that cycle. So that is a possibility. But if that doesn't happen, um, then there's, there's the potentiality for something bad to happen to her. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm like, well, I'm not, okay. I mean, possibly, I, I didn't, I, I, that's why I wanna go back and, and rewatch this stuff because a lot of this stuff, do, stuff doesn't play the way I'm thinking. But uh, I mean, I won't theorize here. But I, I, I don't, I don't know how it's going to turn out. But I mean, it's, it's definitely a possibility. And seeing her say that line definitely uh, lends itself to something potentially happen between um, Arya and the Hound um, if they were to have that confrontation in uh, in this final season. Uh, the windmill. There's a lot going on between the windmill mm -hmm. because we're cutting back and forth inside the windmill with Bran, uh, outside the windmill because we catch up with the guy, the old man on the horse, and the wildlings catch up to him in the rain outside of the windmill. So uh, it's thundering. Hodor gets scared, and he's making a lot of noise. And Orel hears noise inside the uh, inside the windmill. Mm. So now we finally see Bran uh, warging, and he's able to warg into Hodor to make him go to sleep, just so he can shut up and be quiet. Uh, but Orel has already heard something inside of there. So outside of the uh, outside of the windmill. We have um, the old man, and uh, they're about to kill him. Uh, Tormund is, is is going to kill him, and Orel's like, "Look, let the new guy do it. You know, let him prove uh, that he's one of us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying?" So uh, he takes the sword, and Jon Snow can't do it. And Orel's like, "Look, my suspicions were correct. He's you're still a crow." And uh, so he tries. I saw a little slick move he did where he tried to push uh, Igrid out the way mm -hmm. um, to protect her. And she's ultimately, she wants to protect John as well. So he's fighting off the wildlings inside. You know, Jojen is talking to Bran. It's like, look, you're, you're able to war. You need to try to do it. He's like, look, it just, it just happens. He was like, no, try to do it. So. He's able to warg into one of the dire wolves. He sees John out there. And again, this is something that plays, and I think this is a theme, um, especially in this episode, where you have the Starks and the Stark family who are so close, but yet so far. I mean, we see that with Arya and with uh, uh, her brother and her mother. We see that here with Bran and Recon that have Jon Snow right there. 
um, and they're just not able to meet up. But I thought there was just a lot going on intercutting between these two uh, these two scenes here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else we got here? Oh, and uh, Jon Snow ends up killing O'Rell. Mm. Yeah. Finally. Finally. Yeah. Well, he stabs his body, but Orel, I feel like, oh. roars into that bird. Yeah, he did, because the bird escapes. attacks him yeah. and scratches up John's face. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. And then he goes after the bird. So when they war, they actually go into their uh, another animal's. I guess so, yeah. Even. I mean, uh, okay, okay. Uh, I don't know how that magic shit works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dario, Jorah, and Grey Worm when they uh, infiltrate or sneak into Yunkai. Mm -hmm. like, nice little battle scene. Yeah. I didn't know Jorah had moves like that, man. Yeah, man. He, like, he's you know? known to be a great swordsman. He might not be the greatest, but he's he, he get busy. He get busy. Yeah. Uh, looking at the... Uh at my card. Okay. We good to go. Yeah, man. Uh, so... Yeah, they was getting busy in there, man. Like Dario doing his moves with his little curved sword, Grey Worm. Got the stances, man. Looking like Donatello out there, bitch. God damn. <laughs> hey, I'm the turtle dog, man. I, I see. Like, he, was, he, was, he was doing his thing. He so got busy. He got busy with that shit. Um, Lord Ed, uh, what I have? Lord Edmure's wedding. Uh, the actual wedding ceremony. So mm -hmm. again, <laughs> we're talking about um, Edmure and how he's a little reluctant. He pulled that veil back, and he man, was, he was like, pleasantly surprised. A little reluctant. Look, <laughs> like think about that shit, man. Think about like in, in our terms today, like yeah. you getting married to some you've never seen. She ain't got a Facebook page. She ain't on Twitter. She ain't got an Instagram or Snapchat. <laughs> you just going by like word of mouth. So. Not even word of mouth, because no one's describing what she looked like to Edmure. Yeah. No one's saying, like, don't worry, you know, you got a good one, or she's bad, you good. Yeah. No one's saying that, so he's, that's got to be, like, the most nerve-wracking. This is somebody that you're about to be wed to, and y'all expected to be together for the rest of your life. Yeah. And you don't get to pick who it is. Not only have you not seen her, you ain't talked to her, you don't, you know her name, but you don't know what she likes, mm -hmm. or... You know, did she snore or you know, know. you know nothing about, nothing about her, her at all? Yeah, like that's nuts to me. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, but he, but you know he he got he I guess got he, got, he, he got lucked he lucked out he lucked out did he? Cause she might be crazy, but could be possibly, but he'll he'll, he'll make it. He work. was happy. He looked he happy. Was happy. Yeah. He lifted the veil up. He was uh, like, this is well, at least this is wedding night. He'll be good. He'll be good. But uh, this is my last card, so it's about this. <laughs> We've been recording all day. And I haven't been able to dump the footage, so let's get into the red wedding. Mm. Um, let's talk about this. Uh, let's just get into how all this shit kind of played out and everything that was happening. Um, so they take Edmure out for the betting ceremony, and does there's a Edmure moment, know? I don't think he does. So I, I don't think I don't think anybody that was part of the Starks knew. So what happens to him? I don't know. That's the same thing I thought of. I, I don't think nothing. I don't think anything happens to him because he's so he married to Frey's wife, uh, to Frey's daughter. So he's not going to do anything to him. This is more so uh, a, a retaliation because of. Uh, him breaking his him, him, him breaking him breaking the oath. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, so now you married you, you married into the family. Your your pops is the dude that killed your folks and massacred yeah. them at your wedding. Like I know that's the thing, but I don't even think we see Edmir after this. That's so, what I'm saying. Like, what the fuck happened to him? So I have to listen to see what happens to him. But uh, the moment with um, uh, uh, Talisa and Rob uh, right before right before that happens. And um, they're having a conversation about their son, possible son and naming. And then uh, you got Lady Stark looking on and then you see the one guard pass. And once he passes, that's the beginning of the end right there. He closes the door and you hear the music kick in. And uh, yeah, and then they, they pull their crossbows and they start killing all the Starks and everybody that's in that space. It's fucking wild, man. It's crazy. It's still a sad scene. Uh, it didn't. It, it didn't play like it played initially. I, the, the, I, I think the biggest, the reason why it had such a tremendous impact the first time, for me, is yeah. because it was unexpected. But yeah. Um, 
because when you when you compare like the brutality of what's done at the red wedding technically compared to other shit in the show yeah it ain't as bad right yeah. but it's who it's happening to um that makes it bad yeah and the fact that if you weren't aware that it was going to happen it, it the shit comes out of left field and yeah. it's rough it's very rough um and for me the thing that did play the exact same way is just the feeling i had when the like show Ka ended. caitlin's demise yeah. um just just being in disbelief that she's gone like the show and even even rob to a certain extent because the show uh, it's it makes it makes me feel like okay we're setting up rob to be a character who's going to be in the long yeah. game who's going to be one of the you know people vying for the throne at the end and granted this is way before i get yeah. to any of the the you know the the, the the true identities of Jon snow and everything like exactly. that but just the way the show has been yeah going for three freaking seasons yeah, up until this point it makes you it, it, it centers rob as one of the main people Characters. and you take him out in that way uh and then you take caitlin out in that way yeah and, Oh, that shit is rough, man. It, it is. It's absolutely rough, and especially when you see uh, Caitlyn at the end, like begging to, uh, like, out take me and just leave my son. And um, you know, when the Bolton comes up and says, you know, the Lannisters send their regards, and and stabs him in the in the belly, and then that last shot of Caitlyn and how the camera just lingers on her, and then ultimately she gets her, th her throat slit. It's pretty sad, man. But um, yeah, there's this a lot in this episode, man. And uh, this was a big one. This was a big one. But uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get ready to wrap this one up because uh, we've been recording all day and my car is about to die. <laughs> I'll make sure to have two cars next time. But anyway, uh, that is the Reigns of Castamere. Uh, Ca Ca Castamere?